feel like on this show too, you 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 uh, don't even spend time with a lot of your castmates anyway, right? Because you're all in different parts of the world filming. That's true, and that's that can be a big thing sometimes because I remember getting into like season four and five and was meeting people for the first time. The people and people I didn't have a show with for all those years, and then suddenly I'm face to face with them, and it's like, what you have met? I think I've just about met everybody. It took me a long time to meet Jerome. Because there's, as you said, there's so many, there's so many, anyone else? Yeah, there's so many parts of the show that we are not involved in, so we can watch them like fans of the show. And when you meet somebody that you've not worked with for the first time, it's like you're meeting somebody that you're a real fan of, even though you're in the same show as them. It's kind of bizarre. So, how has the fun been for you so far? This Pictures 
said Filipino in tuxedo, it looked amazing. And I was up to my elbows in fruitcake. And I think what I kind of like the most about that, about that sequence is, it just goes to show that how even in season seven, we can find ways of surprising people. The show surprised people all along, it surprised them again by this. So artfully done for all day. Yeah, and it just adds, for the one, for the one of a better expression, forgive me for this, it adds a completely different flavor. It adds a completely different flavor to it. And sometimes surprises don't necessarily come from the Red Wedding or Ned Stark dying or big plot points. They can sometimes come from just putting in a slightly different rhythm than the scene before, and a little essentially silent comedy montage first episode of the seventh season. This just showed that we're still finding ways of giving people something completely unexpected. Well, another thing that, that is very pleasing about both of you in the show is I feel like you're the only just pure loving couple that is together for love, not for some kind of advancement or uh, deceitfulness or whatever. And so I'm wondering how it feels to you guys to represent that so what fan reaction we've got from that. Um, yeah, I think we're both um, really kind of invested in portraying that relationship as kind of honestly and as heartfeltly as we can. Um, because it is this kind of shining light in the middle of all this darkness. And um, I think we're also always trying to be careful to not lean too hard.
love to protect them. But I think, yeah, I think seeing, I think seeing Randall in person and also then seeing Sam are able to stand up for himself when Gilly's come to know Sam as being this incredibly brave human being, to then see him unable to stand up for himself, I think really drives home how, how damaging that relationship has been. I love when she said that, something like, he doesn't know you, he doesn't know what you really are. In that scene, you know, you've heard a lot about this character of Randall, but there's been a kind of shadow hanging over Sam for as long as we've known him in the show. That, that kind of trauma affects him every time he opens his mouth, affects every action that he makes. And I think, I think you only really begin to contextualise Sam when you see Randall. Every the actor did such a good job of playing a total yeah, did. dick. It's totally bleeding. Totally and, and, and everything about Sam makes sense when you see him. That scene's about five minutes long, ten minutes long, and it's uncomfortable to watch for ten minutes. But when you think of that's ten minutes, imagine that all day, every day for 18 years. That's that's when I think people start to really understand Sam's scars and, and contextualise his suffering. And I think that was that, that was the scene that I wanted to have. Ever since Sam first spoke about it, I wanted him to write that in. And in season six, we don't have a lot in season six. I think we're only about three episodes of six, but to be given that little kind of mini pilot, if you like, in the middle of it was really thrilling. The way your head just sunk down, you were completely broken. I felt so heartbroken. I was glad that he came back in the end and stole the sword. I just think in terms of Sam's relationship with Gilly as well, in terms of Sam's relationship with baby Sam in particular, I think Sam and Gilly both are acutely aware of what bad dad is. And I think that, that Sam wants to kind of get some kind of equilibrium back by raising his son, to all intents and purposes of the son, and raising him right. And I think if, if he feels he can.